If you've ever felt left behind by technology, this next 10 minutes could change everything for you. My name is Connie Clark, and in the last 30 years of teaching people how to use technology and computers, I've heard people call themselves computer dummies way too many times. So I wanna show you how using this label might be the very thing holding you back. We're all too hard on ourselves. I get it, I do it too. But in this video, let me show you how to break down the stereotype of being over 50 and not knowing anything about computers. As I said, I've been helping people for years and I am here to become your computer friend, Connie. So as your computer friend, Connie, I wanna tell you to stop the comparison trap. We need to stop comparing ourselves to others, especially people who grew up with technology. Let's think about it, some kids have used a tablet before they've even learned how to walk. So of course they're comfortable with technology. Doesn't mean they're masters of it. Remember your technology journey is unique to you. There's no universal timeline for how quickly or how much you should know. The next thing I want to talk to you about is habits. Now we've had many years behind us of doing things a certain way. So that is part of the challenge. It's learning to do things a different way. You're learning to use a new tool to do these things a different way. When we've done something our entire lives a certain way, it gets very comfortable and easy for us. And when someone suggests doing it differently or using technology to do it instead, that becomes uncomfortable. But you've probably heard it before. When you feel that discomfort, that's when that growth begins. So I'm going to challenge you. Try something new. Try something different. When you encounter a task on your computer, rather than doing it the same way you've always done it, Try and do it a different way. Actually ask yourself, is there a faster way of doing this? Or maybe challenge yourself and say, if I press that button that I've been avoiding, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? Maybe be a bit adventurous. Try a new feature. Click around. The next thing I want to propose to you is the idea of asking questions without fear. If you think about young people, children, they absolutely have no filters when it comes to this. They're always asking questions about stuff. And usually we're the ones receiving those questions. And most of the time we're happy to answer them because we know that's how they're learning. So why is it that as we start getting older, we decide to stop asking questions? I don't know. I've done it myself. We become shy about it. Fear. We fear that others might think we're dumb because we don't know the answer to something. Meanwhile, other people are thinking the same question. So here's what you do. In fact, this is kind of how I started learning more about computers back in the day. Find someone you could comfortably ask questions to. In fact, find more than one person. I always had multiple sources and now I am your one source now. I'm your computer friend, Connie. But you can have a few computer friends too. Have a network of people that you can ask questions of. The next thing I'm going to mention is choose the right teachers. When we're getting help, choosing the right people is crucial. If you're asking for help on how to do something on your phone or your tablet or even your computer, pick someone who you know will be patient with you and will let you do the driving, who will let you do what you need to do while they stand by and teach you how to do it. Avoid that person that just grabs your device or grabs the keyboard or mouse and starts doing it for you. That is not teaching. The way you'll truly learn is by doing it yourself and practicing. If you're the right people around you, you'll learn that much faster. And sometimes, hate to break it to you, sometimes family's not the right people. When someone grabs your phone or your mouse or your keyboard, they're not helping you learn. They're just showing off what they know. Maybe not intentionally, but it's actually making you feel like, boy, I, I don't know as much as they know. So that's not helpful at all. That's why my golden rule when I'm teaching people is to never touch their mouse or keyboard or device, to let them do it. So find that person in your life at your office. Next up is your mindset. Your mindset does matter. We need to be patient with ourselves. Give yourself a break if you do something wrong. Learning takes time and that's perfectly okay. However long it takes is fine. Be curious and open to trying new things. Curiosity really is your gateway to knowledge. Be okay with making mistakes. Everybody makes a mistake. It's no biggie. And pat yourself on the back. Take inventory of how much you already know. I'm sure you know more than you give yourself credit for. I remember when I was teaching a group of people a beginner tech program and asking them how they felt about that program. I'd hear a number of them say they were comfortable with it or felt like they just needed to learn a few new tips and tricks. And then I always hear another group of people telling me they knew nothing. In fact, lots of times they go, I know nothing, I'm a computer dummy, right? They'd actually 
say that. But you know what? As I watched that group of people, I was always impressed with how much they did know that they didn't count. And so I went out of my way to remind them, look, you did that. <laughs> look, you know this. Look, you're watching this YouTube video. You know computers enough to watch a YouTube video. So give yourself some credit. Take, take account of what you do know. Be thankful and grateful for that knowledge and build on it. You're not a computer dummy. You are simply learning. So there's a bit of a common theme going on here. And so this point might not be needed, but I'm just going to mention it anyways. And that is the fact that you should surround yourself with supporters. I think back to a message my pastor gave at one of the Sunday services, and I loved what he said about surrounding yourself with people that build you up. So I'll say the same thing to you. When you're learning about computers, surround yourself with people that help build you up, make you feel better about what you're learning, give you that confidence, not make you feel inferior and feel like, oh my gosh, they know so much more. I'm never going to get this, right? You are not a computer dummy. You are someone learning computers and that's great. In fact, I'm still learning computers and I've been teaching for 30 years on this stuff. Learning doesn't stop. Now, you probably know this next one, but I'm going to mention it anyways, just in case there's a couple of points that add value for you. And that is the fact that you have so many ways to learn in these days. You want to surround yourself with people who can help teach you and be patient with that process. You want to watch YouTube videos just like this one. Google for helpful articles or about questions that you have or read blogs about the topic that you're interested in. You can use AI, artificial intelligence like ChatGPT or many other ones. And they can help you learn stuff. You can take a course online. And if you click in the description below, you'll see I have a whole course library that you might be interested in checking out. You can simply try stuff and practice. And of course, you can read books on the topics that are of interest for you in learning more about. You find the method that works best for you or a combination of the methods that work best for you. Just because somebody does it one way doesn't mean you have to do it that way if that doesn't make sense for you or doesn't resonate with you. Now, I'm going to say it again in terms of learning. Forgive yourself for any mistakes you might make or any information you may not know. Let it go. Move on. Don't get stuck in old habits, old ways of doing things just because you're afraid to try something new. Just try it. Now, I often hear people say, I'm too old to learn this new stuff or it's too late for me to learn it. And let me tell you, that's simply not true. Technology is constantly changing, evolving, getting better. So actually, because of that, nobody's ever caught up on all the learning they have to do because there's more. <laughs> that doesn't sound encouraging, does it? But the fact is, whether you're working or or retired, if you plan to use a smartphone or a tablet or a computer, you want to get more comfortable with that technology. So it's not too late. And if you're thinking, I'll never catch up, I'd say catch up to what? There's no race here. Don't compare yourself to anybody else because you actually have no idea what they really know. They may say they know stuff, but you don't know what's in their heads. Don't worry about anybody else. Just do what's best for you. Take your time and whatever time that is, to feel better about how to get technology working for you. So remember, no matter what your age, if you have a smartphone, tablet, laptop, any device, you were already using technology. You already know stuff. So you can't call yourself a computer dummy. So let's go a little further with that and make it easier and more enjoyable for ourselves. There are great things that technology can do to help us and that's what makes it really worthwhile. It's absolutely not too late to learn. Learning is growing. I've been teaching for three decades and I can tell you with complete confidence that some of my most successful students, in fact, one of them became an instructor, was over the age of 50 when they started. What made them succeed wasn't their age or their background. It was their willingness to try to be patient with themselves and to keep learning. I hope this video helped you. Press the like button, check out some of my other videos and subscribe and keep learning, keep growing. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.